choice is important, but imagine how different your life would be without refrigeration. There would be no way to keep food from rotting. Without refrigeration, scientists would have a hard time with many medical discoveries that have saved millions of lives. The refrigerator was invented through the exploration of insulation because of the need to keep ice from melting in the summer. Ice became popular because of Frederick Tudor's trade innovations and his encounters with new cultures and climates. These new cultures led to new marketing efforts that utilized exchanging luxuries and comforts of different countries. This allowed Tudor to make ice successful worldwide. Frederick Tudor's exploration of new technology, encounters with foreign markets, and his exchange of advertising strategies in Europe and the Indies enabled the industry to grow and become an international success, which would promote the continuous innovation in the country with the invention of the ice box. The ice industry was such a far-fetched idea that it started out as a joke between Frederick and his brother William, where they joked about selling ice from their pond in the Caribbean. Frederick saw this less as a joke, but as a business opportunity. He became known as an archetypal entrepreneur because he was able to create a successful business from such a silly idea. Tudor spent $2,400 to build an ice house in Havana. Due to his family's past successes, he had the money to take risks with his business and make daring business decisions. The business was also supported by Tudor's brother and father, both of whom were financially successful. With the combined efforts of his family, the first cargo for the ice house arrived in February of 1816. He had many delays before this because of the struggle caused by the lack of stability in the Indies where alliances were shifting. Ships boarded due to conflict in the Caribbean caused Tudor to be worried about getting ice and his ships safely to their intended location. Cargo is easily lost at sea, which means the loss of both profit and reliability. This in turn means loss of customers. When his industry finally became more stable, Tudor had to keep other merchants from taking his idea. His idea was so popular that other people began to create copycat businesses. There was fierce competition between merchants, as they were the growing middle class in Boston at the time. Due to the stability of the country, people were interested in improving their lives. By gaining more money through business, they were able to improve their lives and their families' class standing, giving other members of their family a better life. Many famous Bostonians made money trading goods from other countries, so many young people tried to become merchants as well. Ice was a luxury common to people of Boston, even in the summer. The population of the area became more urban, meaning the number of people who had access to ice decreased and Tudor's industry in Boston grew. Small local ice traders had fewer people to trade with, putting many out of business. These local businesses had been around for many years. However, harvesting ice had been time consuming and reaped little profit because it was such a small market. Tudor sought to change this and make ice an international trade. Through his buying of the ice industries in Norway, Tudor was able to spread ice availability while limiting competition. As the industry became more global, ice became a source of national pride for Americans. Not all countries used ice, but Americans used it freely, which caused them to view themselves as more cultured than others. Before Frederick Tudor's industry was successful, he had many setbacks such as financial issues and his creditors getting him imprisoned. The weather also caused the business to fluctuate and become unstable. Despite this, he was able to become one of the richest men in Boston. When the business was first started, Frederick Tudor invested $10,000. Out of this, $4,750 were used to buy the prison of the boat. He lost three or $4,000 on this investment because properly constructed ice houses were necessary to keep the ice from melting. Through trial and error, Tudor learned that ice could be kept from melting even in the summer if it was left in large, tightly packed storehouses filled with sawdust. This discovery allowed for ice to become available year-round and allowed the industry to grow. Because of the growing industry, wealthier people expected their ice to be of a higher quality. This caused many ponds to certify ice, and they felt it was exceptional quality. People expected the ice industry to supply ice all the time, but the main problem with this was that ice was not available during the summer. The storehouses Tudor built to try to keep the ice cold during the summer did not keep enough ice for everyone. Companies would then turn to icebergs in an attempt to supply ice all year. This was highly dangerous, but was supported by the public, because not only did the average person depend on ice, but hospitals had begun to rely on ice for treatment. He also had the issue of ice melting on his boat or in his customers' homes when he sold it in warmer, more temperate climates. Even after giving them instructions, such as keeping it in cloth and linen, the ice melted anyway. Frederick Tudor did many tests to see and better understand ice loss due to melting. He also studied the effects of cold for preserving fruits and meats. The nine main sources of ice near Boston were Fresh Pond in Cambridge, Smith's Pond and Spy Pond in Arlington, Sandy Pond in Eyre, Horn Pond in Woburn, 
Lake Quanapoet in Wakefield, Haggett's Pond in Andover, Suntug Lake in Linfield, and Wenham Lake in Wenham. Frederick Tudor never actually took ice from Wenham Lake, but both names were the ice trade's claim to fame. And the success of Wenham Lake Ice, the most popular name in the ice industry, is directly tied to Frederick Tudor's work. Wenham Lake Ice was widely sought after because even people in faraway countries who had never heard of Massachusetts or New England were familiar with the term Wenham Lake Ice. This was due to Frederick Tudor's ability to adapt to specific demographics with advertising. In London, Tudor's marketing made the people interested in ice, so by the time Wenham Lake Ice was successful, there was a market for the industry abroad. This was crucial to the trade's success as many people had never considered ice in the summer or felt a need for cold drinks because the British preferred their drinks room temperature. Tudor marketed ice as a luxury that the people of America had and it set apart the upper and lower classes. By doing this, he encouraged middle and upper class people in London to purchase ice in order to appear cultured and wealthy. People in Calcutta were quickly becoming very fond of the ice, at least in the homes of the more privileged, before it spread to all classes. As written in an 1845 newspaper, not only is the Wenham Lake ice coming into vogue as a luxury among the aristocracy, but it is also recommending itself to the middle classes as a necessity, and even to the humbler ranks of life as an article of economy. After building large ice houses, many important figures in the industry felt the need to make ice more accessible and long-lasting. The public had also begun to think of ice as a necessity and not a luxury. They continued to buy more ice simply because it had melted and not because they had consumed it all. The industry then put their resources together in an effort to fund and create what would later be known as the ice box. To create the ice box, they took the theories and methods used to preserve ice in storehouses and ships. The ice box took these theories and methods and made them into a convenient and practical wooden box for the home that allowed things to be kept cool without the use of large spaces and sawdust. This made it more accessible to everyone and allowed the ice box to be used by scientists, inventors, and the average person. The invention of the icebox is one of the most underratedly important events, because the invention of refrigeration led to many important changes in American life. The meat industry in Chicago relied on refrigeration to keep meat from rotting while it was processed. Refrigerated railway cars allowed produce and meat to travel across the country and be sold in grocery stores. This changed the diet of the average American and made the global market more available to middle class citizens, as food from all over the world could be imported on insulated ships. This allowed people to consume foods that were not in season where they lived, or could never grow in their climates. One of the growing favorite foods of the middle class was ice cream, a food which existed solely because of the ice trade and the availability of ice to the everyday person and business owner. The medical uses for ice were increasing, and just like the food industry, the medical industry had begun to rely on the constant production of ice. Ice was now used to treat injuries such as burns and illnesses like fevers, as well as the medically insane with treatments like ice baths. The exploration of ice in the medical industry was due to the reliability of ice. Another large factor is the increase of ice treatment was the widespread availability to most people. Home treatment was now available to the everyday family. Not only was medical care changing, but medical research had changed to utilize refrigeration, which allowed chemical and biological samples to be saved. The invention of refrigeration not only changed the lives of people at the time, but would have an impact on life for years to come. The meatpacking industry would later become one of the largest industries in America and is partially responsible for the rise of the U.S. economy. As America becomes a world power and clashes with other countries, competitions of knowledge become well known. One of the most famous battles is the space race. Many of the parts required to make spaceships use technology and refrigeration to control the atmosphere in spaceships and keep conditions livable. These lasting effects were caused by the exploration of refrigeration technology. The advancements in technology changed the American lifestyle by helping to further medical knowledge. This technology was created when businessmen in the ice industry encountered setbacks concerning the longevity and transportation of ice. This trade had grown as people exchanged foreign produce for New England ice. Frederick Tudor's exploration of advertising and marketing techniques allowed the industry to be successful in foreign places where people had yet to encounter ice as a daily part of their lives. The industry came about after an exchange Tudor had with his older brother. When Frederick Tudor began to explore the idea of selling and trading ice, he encountered a new need for technology, and exchanges with the new technology led to many developments and creations that have left lasting impacts on our society today.